Mr. Ligari, if you would, please. <clears throat> uh, Chairman Yoho, Ranking Member Sherman, and members of the committee, let me thank you all for inviting me to this uh, important hearing on U.S.-Pakistan relations. My focus mainly on Sindh province. Mr. Chairman, Pakistan is topic of much media discussion, but there is little media and political discussions about the Sindhis, who comprises about 14% Pakistan's population of just over 205 million people. Mr. Chairman, Sindhi people believed that becoming part of Pakistan would bring an end to religious wars and the prevalence of justice and rights. But hostility and tensions in the region have never ended. The United States can play a very important role in this region, particularly to bring about the eradication of terrorism and restoration of human rights. Mr. Chairman, Pakistan is a de facto military and state run by, uh, by its army. Islamic jihadi outfits and protected and promoted by the army as assets and as an important Pakistani foreign and defense policy tools. Militant Islam is the most powerful weapon of the Pakistani army. Islamic religious organizations have been and will always be the, their assets. They not only use these arg religious organizations against India, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan, but also against the United States and Israel. Mr. Chairman, Sindh can be contrasted with Pakistan's military-dominated state. Jihad, Islam, and the army have always been features of the Pakistani army, Pakistani state. Sindh's identity has always been peace, tolerance, coexistence, culture, and democracy. Sindh has always been at the forefront of, of pro-democracy struggles against military dictators in Pakistan. Sindh played leading role in the 1983 movement for the restoration of democracy. Mr. Chairman, Pakistan's official language, Urdu, is the mother tongue of the Indian Muslim migrants, currently only 8% of the total population. The state of Pakistan imposed Urdu as a tool of cultural repression upon the rest of the populations Sindhis, Baloch, Pashtuns, Punjabis, Siraikis, and other native languages. This was of the reasons for the separation of Bangladesh in 1971. Injustice done to the indigenous languages has eroded the cultural identity of Sindh, replaced by the violence and extremism. The state has catered the interest of Punjabis and Muhajirs. Punjab has always been superior Muhajirs have always been privileged. Meanwhile, Pashtuns, Sindhis, and Baloch have always suffered. Mr. Chairman, as long as you don't understand these ground realities, you will not be able to align American interest and relation with those of Pakistan. Hundreds of Sindhis nationalists are missing in Sindh, and thousands of Baloch nationalists are missing in Balochistan. Their enforced disappearances is part of the so-called strategic depth policy of Pakistan's army and ISI because these activists are against the multi-billion dollar CPEG. Young Sindhi Hindu women are being forcefully converted to Islam and made sex slaves of Islamic extremists in Sindh. Mr. Chairman, it is high time that the United States Re reconsider the nature of their relationships with Pakistan, their military, and the ISI. The U.S. should also better its relationship with the pluralistic people of Sindh. I have many recommendations, which is uh, already in my full committee, but I want to, uh, one recommendation, which is, uh, uh, I want to read it here. The Pakistani military and ISI should be held accountable for fraud and abuse of U.S. resources, equipment, and money, which they used to hunt down to anti-jihadi Sindhi and Baloch dissidents instead of going against the jihadi and terrorist groups, including the Hafiz Said and Haqqani Network. Thank you so much.